It always pays to respect your elders, especially when they're made of steel and change the face of warfare forever. Meet the grandfather of every modern tank, the tiny Renault FT. While it might look like a trash can with treads compared to today's battlefield behemoths, this pint-sized pioneer introduced revolutionary features that tanks would follow for the next century. Born from the blood-soaked stalemate of World War I, when the Western Front had become a meat grinder of trenches, barbed wire, and machine guns, this little fighter was about to break the rules and the deadlock. Origins 1916, the Western Front is a hellscape of mud, blood, and futility. Both sides are desperate to break the stalemate. The first tanks were already rolling onto battlefields, lumbering metal monsters like Britain's rhombus-shaped behemoths and France's own Schneider CA-1. These were essentially mobile fortresses, armored beasts designed to crush barbed wire and lead infantry across the nightmare of no man's land. But Colonel Jean-Baptiste Estienne, a French artillery officer with a penchant for innovation, had a different vision. What if instead of one big tank, we build a large number of smaller tanks? They can overwhelm the enemy like a swarm of bees, and they'll be cheaper, too. Estienne approached the French automotive magnate Louis Renault with his idea. Intrigued, Renault had a wooden mock-up built by October 1916. And then, nothing happened. The project slammed headfirst into the military's greatest enemy, bureaucratic red tape and command remained stubbornly committed to their massive land battleships. Only after a dizzying carousel of changes in French political and military leadership did the first prototype finally get tested in January of 1917. Orders for 150 were placed in February, but the tangled web of French bureaucracy demanded more testing in April and May. Production finally began in earnest in September 1917, almost a year after the initial concept. Military innovation at its finest, folks. Naming. The resulting vehicle was christened the Renault FT, a name that means absolutely nothing. It was simply the next available letter combination in Renault's internal naming system. Some have romantically suggested that FT stands for faible tonnage, or low tonnage, and also franchisseur du tranchi or trench crosser, but those are just fanciful myths. It's sometimes called the FT-17 for the year it was introduced, though this name didn't appear in records until after the war. Dimensions by modern standards, the Renault FT was comically small. The Chihuahua of the tank world, it weighed just 7.3 tons, or 6,589 kilograms. It stood barely 7 feet or 2.13 meters tall, and stretched a mere 11 and a half feet or 3 and a half meters long. That's 16 and a quarter feet or 5 meters if you count its trench crossing tail. At just over 5 and a half feet or 1.71 meters wide, this tank was narrower than most SUVs on today's road. Roads. You could practically park three of them in a standard garage. Weapons Like other tanks of the era, the Renault FT came in male and female versions. The male had a Puteau SA-18 37mm cannon, while the female was armed with an 8mm M1914 Hotchkiss machine gun. This armament might seem pitiful compared to other tanks of the time, but the Renault FT had a revolutionary trick up its sleeve. Its weapons were mounted in a fully rotating turret, giving them a 360-degree firing arc, the first tank to feature this game-changing innovation. While armored cars had used turrets before, this was the first time that one had appeared on a tracked vehicle. This single feature was so revolutionary that virtually every tank since, from the mighty World War II Tiger to today's Abrams, has followed suit. It's like Renault had invented the tank equivalent of the wheel. Crew Unlike other World War I tanks that needed enough crewmen to feel the basketball team, the Renault FT required just two brave souls, a driver sitting in the hull and a commander standing behind him, operating the turret weapons. Comfortable? About as much as wearing a suit of armor in a phone booth during a heat wave. But efficient? Absolutely. The Renault FT may have only needed two crewmen to keep it moving, but if you want to see what it's like to command an entire fleet of tanks across the battlefield yourself, check out World of Tanks, the sponsor of today's video.
World of Tanks is a free-to-play online game that puts you in the commander's seat of over 800 historically inspired tanks, including the Renault FT. Battle across more than 40 detailed maps that recreate everything from the open plains to city ruins, where tactics, teamwork, and firepower make all the difference. And there's never been a better time to jump in. The brand new World of Tanks 2.0 update is here, the biggest update in the game's history. It introduces Tier 11 tanks, improved matchmaking, and a brand new PvE mode set on the stunning Nordskar map. And here's the best part. If you're new to the game, use our invite link below and use code COMBAT to get a powerful head start. You'll receive the Cromwell B Tier 6 tank, 250,000 credits, 7 days of premium access, and 3 rental tanks. The Tiger 131, T-78, and Type 64, each for 10 battles. And hey, if you're a returning player who hasn't played in 30 days, you'll get 3 days of premium, a Centurion Mark 5-1 RAAC rental for 7 days, or 100,000 credits if you already own it, plus the stylish Bargain 2D camouflage. So what are you waiting for? Command your tank, roll out, and join over 100 million players worldwide in World of Tanks. Use the link at the top of the description and in the pinned comment to start your adventure. Armor Protected by steel plates between 8mm thick on the hull and up to 22mm thick on the turret, the Renault FT could shrug off small arms fire with ease. Of course, a direct hit from artillery would still turn it into a very expensive coffin, but hey, that's the risk you take when driving what amounts to be a motorized tea kettle into a battle. Engine and Performance the Renault FT pioneered another feature now standard on modern tanks, a rear-mounted engine. In this case, a Renault four-cylinder beast pumping out a whopping 35 horsepower. Yeah, that's less power than many modern sit-on lawnmowers. This mighty power plant propelled the tank to blistering speeds of around 5 miles or 8 kilometers per hour. Pedestrians could outwalk it, but that was blazing fast by 1917 tank standards. Its operational range was about 22 miles or 35 kilometers. Not exactly a cross-country cruiser, but more than sufficient for its intended role supporting infantry at the front lines. Production Numbers and Variants once production finally kicked into gear, the Renault FT became the Model T of tanks. Around 3,700 were built by war's end, making it the most mass-produced tank of World War I by far. For comparison, the British made just 400 Mark V tanks, while the Germans managed a paltry 20 A7Vs. The Renault wasn't just winning the innovation race, it was dominating the numbers game too. As designers figured out this whole new tank concept, numerous variants emerged. Command and control versions, the FT-75BS with a howitzer, and anti-tank versions sporting bigger guns. It was like watching evolution happen in Fast Forward. Other users the Renault FT became the iPhone of the tank world. Everyone had to have one. When Renault couldn't meet demand, other manufacturers stepped in, including American factories. The Americans made their own slightly modified version, the M1917 6-ton, while still producing tanks for France. Allied nations during the war, including Britain, Italy, Belgium, Russia, and the United States, all received shipments. After the war, the tank, or localized variants, spread to Finland, Italy, Japan, Lithuania, the Netherlands, Turkey, Romania, Germany, and countless others. It was history's first truly global tank platform. Battlefield Performance and Legacy the Renault FT's baptism of fire came on May 31, 1918, at ploissy chazelle 31 tanks supported a French counteroffensive and scored an immediate success. For the loss of just five vehicles, they managed to cripple an entire German division. As intended, these tanks overwhelmed enemy forces with swarm tactics. Their small size and low profile made them difficult targets, and the infantry loved them because the enemy would focus their fire on the tanks instead of the soldiers. Their compact dimensions even allowed them to operate in forests, terrain impassable to larger land ships. The Renault wasn't without its flaws, though. Early versions suffered mechanical issues with radiator belts and cooling systems, but the reception was overwhelmingly positive. The French were preparing large numbers for a planned spring 1919 offensive that never came, as hostilities ceased before this could happen. After the war, many nations built their tank forces around the Renault FT. These little warriors saw action in the Polish-Soviet War and the Spanish Civil War. 
Remarkably, many were still in service when World War II erupted in 1939, though by then they were woefully outclassed by more modern tanks. When Germany overran France, captured FTs were pressed into service with Vichy French forces, or used by the Wehrmacht for occupation duties and training. Conclusion the Renault FT began as a solution to a specific problem, how to cross no man's land without becoming another corpse in the mud. What emerged was a revolutionary vehicle whose DNA runs through every modern tank. Its rotating turret, rear-mounted engine, and small, efficient crew compartment established the template that tank designers have followed for over a century. This tiny ancestor may not impress with raw firepower or imposing size, but its influence towers over tank history. Sometimes the smallest innovations make the biggest impact, and the Renault FT proved that good things really do come in small packages.